hey, um, a lot of things are going on in the news today. Um, I'll, I'll just cut right to the chase. Um, I'm homesick. And last night I watched one of my Netflix... <coughs> Sorry about that. One of my Netflix movies that had come in the mail when I was gone this weekend. It's called Rain Over Me. It's um, starring Adam Sandler and Don Cheadle. Um, you know, every now and again, Adam Sandler is in a serious movie. And what the movie's about is um, that they were college roommates and Adam Sandler uh, lost his family in the 9-11 attacks, his wife and his three children and his dog. And he is suffering from such post-traumatic stress disorder that he has blocked out that memory. And uh, it's kind of the journey that uh, the two of them go to get, uh, are on together as he, um, I don't know, just kind of goes, I don't know, that they go on together to discover about him and his life and everything. And, you know, everyone processes death and trauma and um, horror in different ways. And I remember uh, that day, I remember being at home and watching um, on the news when the first plane, uh, maybe even both planes, hit the World Trade Center. And just watching and, and kind of, you know, taking it in, not even probably for what it was. I, I mean, I guess... I don't think I really even understood it as, as an attack on our country, exactly. Um, I knew it was crazy, but um, I don't know. I just, I watched it, and then I got on the train, and I went to work. This was actually right, um, this was right the, the fall after I had been um, diagnosed bipolar, and the fall before... I was going to get sober. So I was actually in a very tenuous, strange place myself. And I went to work, and generally when, when crisis, crisis happens, I'm very, um, I disconnect. I don't have a lot of emotion about things like that. And so I went to work, and everyone was, you know, understandably shaken and worried. And, and, and because I worked for a land trust department, um, you know, we didn't get off work for very much. I mean, we would get off work sometimes for, um, you know, I guess when I worked at the bank, we got off work for bank holidays, but, um, you know, I was just kind of like, everyone wanted to go home, and I kind of was very, you know, glib, and, and like, we're not going to get to go home, like, are you kidding me? We don't get to go home for anything, and um, everyone was just really upset, and I just was kind of like, whatever, and, you know, sure enough, we did get to go home, and it wasn't until quite some time later in life that I realized that our building was across one street from the state of Illinois building, kitty corner from Chicago City Hall, and across the street from the federal building. So um, in retrospect, I guess I understand why people were uh, a little shaken up, especially given the possibility, you know, that they, you know, were, you know, telling people that, you know, other cities might be attacked and, you know, all of that, Sears Tower and whatnot. I stayed... I stayed until our, they cut our internet off and, and told us that we had to go home. My boss and I were the last ones in the building. And then I walked out, and most of the people had, you know, already left downtown and were trying to get on metro trains and whatnot. And I walked the other way because I headed down to the L. And it was a bright, gorgeous fall day, sun shining. You know, I guess it was not even fall yet. It was still summer, really. And, uh, and that was that, you know, and people were horribly shaken, you know, I mean, people, you know, were losing relatives and friends and not sure where relatives and friends were, and, um, you know, I didn't know anyone who lived in New York, and, and so that helped that, you know, helped me to keep that distance, but, you know, also, I just, that's how I am, you know, when something is very, um, emotional, I think part of me just snaps out of it, and I'm just completely emotionally void, and so I was looking at this kind of from a, a journalistic sense, and I was looking at this from, you know, this kind of, you know, far left liberal, you know, like, you know, I can't believe this ha hasn't happened sooner, you know, that the world, you know, 
there's parts of the world who have hated us for so long and you know this we were under bush and and all of this and you know even my liberal friends were kind of like you're crazy like I can't believe you're talking like this when you know we've suffered such a loss and and our country is in such turmoil and people are you know doing under such grief um but that's just where I was you know I was just completely emotionally disconnected from the whole thing and that's how I was I was in you know I yeah, in CNN mode um as I like to call it and actually it would be quite some time before uh I would have any sort of emotion about it one of the first times I had emotion about it was seeing a photograph of people jumping from the buildings um that was one of the first times I was hit with the truth of the situation that people had to make a choice uh, that they couldn't go down and that they didn't want to die in that building and so that they had chosen to jump and uh, that was that was horrific uh, and so that was one of the first times that I felt some of an emotion about the about about the situation um, and, you know, and, and pieces of it came to me, you know, over the years. And, and then as some of the, as, as it's faded a little bit, you know, then I've become more and more annoyed at, as certain politicians have used 9-11 as this rally cry. You know, it's like, well, a lot of people died. And now I think you're using this as some sort of hollow fear tactic. You know, if I say this long enough and hard enough, you know, maybe you'll just get scared enough to, to listen to me or to follow my policies. Um... But regardless of how horrible it was or how scared some people were, you know, a couple of things have come into, um, you know, recent light. Um, and, you know, Mankow recently got waterboarded, albeit briefly. And um, I thought it was a really good, it was a really good example of someone who, you know, has kind of been this shock jock and also someone who's been holding some pretty right-leaning views, uh, who now has unequivocally said that, yes, in fact, this act is an act of torture. And you know, I don't care what happened on September 11th. I don't care how much we want to stop that from ever happening again. I don't care who these people are, or what they've done, or what we think they might do in the future. We can't ever do that. We can't ever torture. It's not an option um, in any way, shape, or form. I don't care what type of torture you have concocted. Um, waterboarding is torture. And it's not an option ever. Um, we we are not that country, and we do not believe in torture, and we cannot torture for any reason, under any circumstances, to any person at any time. Um, it's just not an option. I don't care what excuse, what possible circumstance you might come up with or might try to sway me with. It's just not an option ever. And um, you know, at some point I'll annotate. Um, a URL, and it's it's a, it's a, the intro to the very first Daily Show that they returned with since uh, you know 9/11. Uh, it was September 20th, 2001, and and I cry every time I see it, and it's amazing. Um, I respect John Stewart so much, not only for being a great satirist, but because he's an intelligent, thoughtful human being who is rational and thoughtful, and and truly is. Um, I don't know. I just respect the man. And I and he loves this country. That's why. Because he loves this country enough to um, say when he thinks um, say when he thinks that he feels things are wrong, but also to say when he thinks that we're doing something right. And um, so I, I encourage you to go watch that clip when you see the little link pop up. Um, but yeah, so I watched this movie Rain Over Me and I got yet another understanding of what happened that day and how there are still people who are processing that those days events in various ways and various times and various places and how they are um, still, you know, still, you know, going through that in different um, phases, you know, Maybe some extreme, uh, like the guy portrayed in the movie, and maybe not so extreme, but that um, we'll be dealing with this for a long time. So, that's it.